It's that special time of year again, when college players abandon their teammates during bowl season to prepare for the NFL draft. One such player is Kentucky's Will Levis, seen here driving an invisible race car. Is he any good? Hell yeah! He's the best there is at churning my stomach. That's Will assaulting my delicate sensibilities by adding mayonnaise to his coffee like a savage. I hear giggles in that room. Why is no one stopping him? Mayo doesn't dissolve. Now it's just floating chunks of blubbery goop. God, I hope he goes to the Seahawks. Get him as far away from my coffee as possible. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Welcome to Shut Up Football. I'm Jeff Stoltzfus. That's Kevin. Last week, Dan Snyder testified for Congress. Alexander Madison's booty got him in trouble, and grab your friends. We're fighting gorillas. We're talking about week 14 of the NFL season. We'll recap the games in a second, but first, it's barely news. The Cowboys are looking to perform a $295 million upgrade to AT&T Stadium. Jerry wants to host the 2026 World Cup, and he can't do it in that $1.3 billion dump. They need upgrades to the premium spaces, like champagne bidets and caviar bidets, plus an upgrade to its technology. I hear that place is littered with crappy AT&T tech. Commander's owner, Dan Snyder, testified before Congress. In one excerpt, he was asked if he told employees to call him sir, never look him in the eye, and walk the other way when they saw him coming, like people weren't going to walk the other way when they saw him coming anyway. There were other weird nuggets, like the fact that Dan Snyder doesn't have an email account, but how will he know when the Nigerian prince needs money? Also, it's kind of a lie, because the executive office has email, which he is a part of, but doesn't have access to, so... It sounds like when the league emails important information, like he's being accused of sexual misconduct, someone from the office has to log into the email, then print it out, and then read scream it through a tin can with a string attached to it connected to another tin can pressed against his ear. Snyder was somehow able to drag the entire team bus into the deposition and then throw everybody under it. But nobody was more bust than former GM Bruce Allen, who also testified to Congress. Allen said, the racist John Gruden email leak came from the commanders, which I assume led to a lot of nodding and one dude shrieking, I knew it! Camuel Newton made an appearance on I Am Athlete again, dressed like he's been training dog sleds in the Yukon. He said he's still better than every quarterback in the NFC South. Oh, really? You think you're better than Andy Dalton, Marcus Mariota, Sam Darnold, and he has a point here. Cornerback Marlon Humphrey discussed the philosophical debate raging in the Ravens' locker room. Who would win in a fight? 100 humans or one gorilla? I had my crack team of researchers look into it, which is really just one guy on crack who searches Google, but like really intensely. Gorillas have tougher skin and thick skulls. Without weapons, you're not winning that fight. Not even with greater numbers. Unless you can figure out how to trick the gorilla. Remember when Bugs Bunny would dress up like a girl? So you gotta date the gorilla, make it fall in love with you, while simultaneously beating it down mentally. Just daily digs like, that shirt used to fit you. That way, he'll crave your love and approval. And when you rob him of both by breaking up with him, he'll become so despondent, he'll end it all. Of course, this all hinges on just how much gorilla sex you can endure during the interim. Wait, was this supposed to be a fight to the death? And finally, last week's celebration finds included Alexander Madison, who faked an injury and then twerked in the end zone. It was a nod to a woman's soccer celebration, except Madison's cost him over $6,000. Aw, oh, come on, man. Just let them dance. They aren't hurting anybody. In fact, maybe we should just do away with field goals and have a dance-off for PATs. Bring in some celebrity judges from So You Think You Can Dance sure would lead to a lot less gritties. And that's barely news. And now it's time to take a look back to last week's games. It's time for the recap. Devontae Adams made a one-hand, no-eyes catch. And while that kind of power won't earn you a spot on the Avengers, it might just earn you a Pro Bowl. Hope you like Hawaiian pizza and shitty football. John Wolford drew the start for the Rams, but he never threw a pass. 
He was replaced by Baker Mayfield on the next series, who hadn't been with the team long enough to find the trauma center. He must have been up all night snorting Adderall and fucking the playbook. Jerry Tillery was flagged for acting like a schoolyard jerk after he knocked the ball out of Baker Mayfield's hands. This guy's been watching too many 80s movies and cheering for the villains. You tell him, Jerry. He'll never learn karate here. Go back to Reseda with the rest of the poor kids. The Rams receiving core is confounding. The lead receiver of the night was Ben Skoronek, who I'm pretty sure I gave a dollar to under the freeway for washing my windshield. In the final drive of the game, Mayfield took him 89 yards and won the game. Coach McVay was jazzed to the tits, even though he made four left turns and ended up right back where he started with a Jared Goff variant. Baker headbutted a guy, and the guy with the helmet on rubbed his head. You're not earning points for ignorance-based machismo. Just high five like a regular person. He did it! Baker Mayfield just won the Rams' backup quarterback job for the next five years. I mean, it could be worse. It's not Cleveland. In a game where Kirk Cousins topped 400 yards and Justin Jefferson took more than half of it, you'd expect a better outcome. Instead, the Vikings collapsed under the weight of their own balls, like getting cute at the goal line with Dalvin Cook, only to watch it go the other way. Jared Goff was dealing. He's playing the best football of his career. Lions converted third and seven on a pass to offensive lineman Penny Sewell. Were they trolling everyone who said they should have drafted a receiver instead? He looked like a tight end with an unhealthy relationship with food. They said there's a recession coming. For the Vikings, it's already here. This game belonged to Roquan Smith. First, he sidelined Kenny Pickett. Then, he picked off Mitchell Trubisky. Not that he was the only one. Trubisky throws interceptions in threes, like celebrity deaths. J.K. Dobbins might have only been 80%, but that was 100% more than the Steelers could handle. Tyler Huntley left the game early after getting rocked. Undrafted rookie Anthony Brown came in. He said his father always told him, stay ready so you don't have to get ready, which is my motto too, and why I always sleep dressed like a clown, just in case a circus breaks out while I sleep, or a sexy Mrs. Clown stops by. Like a dog taking a crap, Steelers dropped one in their own backyard. Burrow and Chase connected early and often. Chase went for 119 yards and a touchdown. Joe Mixon was back in action, but Samaj P. Ryan still saw some snaps. He disappeared into a crowd and reappeared on the other side like a goddamn magic trick. Before the half, the Browns were looking at a Hail Mary, and kicker Cade York wanted a chance at the 67-yard field goal. How do you say no to that face? Look at him! He's like a chipmunk who just wants a nut. Just give him the nut, coach. Burrow found long-haired Trenton Irwin all alone for six. He's seen an uptick in production the past few weeks, now that his request to the FAA to divert planes away from his forehead has been granted. The Browns never got their ground game going. There was no room for Chubb. Donovan Peoples-Jones became Deshaun Watson's favorite target. A terrible label to own, especially if you look good in makeup. The Bills' defense treated Mike White like he stole their girlfriends. He was knocked out of the game twice. Somehow, he came back both times and finished the game. Flacco saw a little action and relief, but he didn't fare much better. At least he left with all his bones where they started. Josh Allen was hurtling defenders again. Winter team's gonna smarten up and put a kiddie pool of cement under him. On fourth and one, CJ Mosley tackled Dawson Knox like Christmas dinner after they faked a snap. After the game, Mike White was provided a complimentary ride in an ambulance and a tour of the local hospital. Everything is bigger in Texas, including the humiliation if the Cowboys lost this game. And they almost did, but Texans gonna Texan. Davis Mills was reinserted into the lineup, which must have felt like a catheter to Texans fans. But he wasn't alone. Jeff Driscoll was shoved in too. So like, two catheters then. Holy urethra! The Texans front line didn't allow a sack, and the defense was making big stops when it mattered. Amari Rogers had a touchdown and played a violin for some reason. Do Cowboys hate violins? Is that like a thing? Damian Pierce fumbled the ball and Trayvon Diggs ran the wrong way for what seemed like much longer than you'd want. The Cowboys pulled this one out. They barely beat the worst team in the league featuring a third string quarterback. Mwah. Chef's kiss, bitches. The Eagles destroyed the Giants. Everything just fell their way. Even deep throws on fourth down and the double coverage were rewarded. The Giants blocked a punt, and poorly named punter Sipos took off with it. He was injured on his way out of bounds. Giants fans cheered the injury, and Sipos responded in kind. Giants punter Jamie Gillen had a bar mitzvah after his balls dropped, and he tried to kick it anyway, which is very much illegal. Coach Dable was pissed. Gillen tried to hide. 
Good luck with that, buddy. Maybe keep the helmet on and hair tucked in. You're not exactly Guy Incognito. Don't be surprised next week when Dable's not the only one sporting a dome. The Eagles just clinched a playoff berth. Everyone else in the NFC East is just licking their undercarriage. And though 12-1 looks nice, you can't put it on the mantle. Trevor Lawrence had 300 yards and four touchdowns. He connected with Evan Ingram on two of them. Derrick Henry was making every day look like leg day. But he was benevolent, giving two fumbles to the Jags defense. Nice guy. Henry wasn't the only Titan giving gifts. They gave four turnovers collectively. Nothing was good enough today, Coach Vrabel said. My wife's breakfast was shit. I ran like five red lights and sideswiped a nun. I missed the toilet while peeing like three times. It wasn't even my toilet. The Titans lost their third straight game. And if this division wasn't such a steaming mound of make, that might mean something. The Jags are now two games better than they were last year, and the arrow is pointing straight sideways. I mean, a little up, but be realistic. Jerry Judy had three touchdowns. He looked dominant at times. And at other times, like a child throwing a fit because he got the red plate and he wanted the blue one. Whoa, whoa, you can't touch a ref. They're like monkeys at the zoo. I learned that lesson the hard way. Mahomes put on a magic show, chucking ducks on the run without even looking. Jarek McKinnon went over 100 yards. After one of his touchdowns, he opened a safe and boxed whatever was inside. Sandwich enthusiast Russell Wilson had his best game of the season. He threw three touchdowns before a serious injury forced him from the game. Brett Rippon finished the game for him with one very good play and one not so good one. The Panthers had a very specific plan. Run everybody. Foreman, Hubbard, and Blackshear combined for 223 yards and two touchdowns. It was the same approach they've used on their fans for years. Just wear them down. Such dominance takes pressure off pumpkin-bearded Sam Darnold, who only needed one good throw for a touchdown. Although it was overshadowed by Terrace Marshall, who made a catch with his knees. Good idea. I think every receiver should have a backup plan for when their hands fail. I'm thinking hands, knees, ass, mouth. Although, maybe not in that order. Probably don't want to go ass to mouth. The Seahawks got a free play, and Drew Locke knew just how he wanted to spend it. Very unprofessional, Drew. Very unprofessional. Hi, Dukin! Steve Wilkes and the Panthers are finding ways to win, which is pretty impressive considering the cupboards are stocked with apocalypse-grade soup and rat poison. Debo Samuel sprinted for a touchdown and completely took out a cameraman. Oh, don't everybody help me up all at once. Brock Purdy threw two touchdowns and ran for another. Tom Brady threw two interceptions. Brady pleaded with the ref after he was choked by a defender. You're fine, you big baby. He couldn't have squeezed your vocal box that hard if you could still bitch about it. The Bucks were absolutely eviscerated, and Brady was upstaged by Mr. Irrelevant. Hey, how you doing? I'm Tom Brady. I'm better than you. Uh, I'm really not sure about that, sir. If Tom Brady said his name was Toby, and he owned a string of successful ATV rentals near Mountain Resorts, I'd believe him. Niners defenders Greenlaw and Gibson, who picked off Brady earlier, asked him to sign the balls. Lucky. I wish he'd sign mine. Justin Herbert hit Mike Williams in the back of the end zone for a touchdown, and it's about time. Finally, someone did the stanky leg. Jeff Wilson Jr. pounded it up the middle and lost the ball. It naturally found its way to Tyreek Hill's hands, who took off for the end zone. A fluke play, but I know one guy who's gonna get an earful from coaches about it. Hill's other touchdown came when the defender's leg hit his and he fell to the ground. It was a good win for the Chargers, and an off night for the Finns, who stunk the place up like weak old tuna. Kyler Murray was injured on the third play of the game. He tore his ACL. Look at Mac Jones and Colt McCoy, looking like a before and after picture. Jones had another rough day. He was yelling at offensive coordinator Matt Patricia and waving him off. A level of ire and disrespect typically reserved for Lions fans. Later, Jones said he wasn't frustrated by the offense. But during the game, it appeared he was actively trying to murder Matt Patricia with his mind. DeAndre Hopkins fumbled and the Pats took it to the end zone. The beginning of the end for this game. Ramondre Stevenson left injured, but Patriots running backs are a dime a dozen. Rookies Kevin Harris and P.R. Jr. each got their first pro touchdowns. After that, it was just watching Bill Belichick mumble into a headset while the defense undressed Colt McCoy like a dollar store prostitute. That's our show. Thank you so much for watching Shut Up Football. We do appreciate it. We'll catch you next time. Peace! Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.
It sound right, boy. I'm just barking. I'm just basically yelling now. You're all going to be replaced with robots. Not you, Kevin. You're too valuable. Holy urethra!